Hello and welcome to this episode of the Cole Memo. In this episode, I'm going to be going through some legislation that was just filed. I'll kind of be showing you how I do that as a layman. In other words, as somebody who is not qualified. <laughs> and I'll show you what I think I see. Again, I'm not qualified. I'm not a legal professional. I'm not a, not a journalist. And I've always really insisted on, on, in fact, the opposite. I'm just a person just like you. Uh, I just bought a microphone and you just happened to, to be choosing to listen to me right now. Folks, you're tuned into the Cole Memo. I'm your host, Cole Preston. Every episode is released in audio, video, and transcript format for the first time in a long time. I'm doing a podcast live on Instagram. To find the transcript, audio, or video version of any episode, please refer to the description of the episode that you're listening to now. Within that description, you can find a link and if you follow that link, it will take you to our website, which will display the transcript for this episode and the platforms where you can find this episode in audio or video formats. If you're unable to locate the episode description on whichever platform you're listening from, simply take note of the episode number and visit thecolememo.com. From there, you can find the corresponding episode, and then you'll be able to access the audio, video, and transcript version of that episode. You might also find any links that we referenced during the episode so that you might be able to do your own research. Since I mentioned, if you're just tuning in right now, there are cannabis bills that have been filed and some things have caught my eye in these bills. Uh, I'll have those bills linked in the podcast description for this episode. If you're not listening to this episode of the Cole Memo on Patreon, then you're listening to this episode later than our patrons. To become a patron, go to thecolememo.com slash Patreon. It's a great way to support our show. Another way to support our show is at thecolememo.com slash support. You can make a one-time monthly or yearly contribution of your choice. That's right. You could donate a dollar monthly. That's $12 a year, and it would help me uh, to afford hosting fees, equipment, travel, uh, so on and so forth. But I just want to say if you're not able to support us financially, that's totally okay. One of the best ways to support our show is free. Subscribe to or follow our show. Leave us a positive review from wherever you're listening to us from. Favorite this episode, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, or post a review. Your engagement and support is appreciated. It's just about 6 p.m. It's May 1st, 2024. Wow, we're already almost halfway through 2024. There was some big news yesterday, but that's not we're talk. That's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today are two cannabis bills that were recently filed. I'll be going through uh, both of them. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the second bill that I actually saw today. I'm going to display it on my screen right now. So once again, folks, if you're not watching, watching the video version of this podcast, you're missing out on the visual element. Uh, that is provided. So this first bill that I am displaying right now, which once again will be linked in the podcast description, was filed by Senator Laura Fine, who I've personally not heard of. Uh, but there were some things that stood out to me that seem – one specific thing that seems a bit unnecessary – uh, we'll go through this. Again, I, I just want to reiterate one more time that not only is this my first reading of this law or, or this bill, rather, uh, but I am not a legal professional. And so, you know, this is my layman understanding of what I'm reading. I should also stress, like I try to stress every time we look through bills on this show, this is just a bill. It's not the law yet. It's just a proposal. It would have to pass. Uh, the chamber in which it was introduced, and then, of course, the other one. So in this case, this is a Senate bill, because like I said, it was from Senator Laura Fine. So uh, it would have to also go through the House before being signed by the governor and ultimately becoming law. Here's the thing that stood out to me. I want to just start with the red flags of this new bill. Um there's a part in the bill, and I'll pull it up right now. This is how I will show you how I go through bills. So when you're looking at a bill as a lay person, as you can see, it's pretty. it looks pretty boring. Uh, the text is relatively bland, but what you'll notice is that some text is underlined. These are updates. Let's look at the update that really, really caught my eye, and uh, like I said, I, I felt uh, upon first blush was a bit unnecessary. 
If you search up the term seeds in this bill, it I believe it appears eight times in both this bill and the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act under what's this section here? If I were to cite it. So it says a dispensing organization shall not. I'm, I'm not sure. It's under subsection P of whatever this is under. You can see this, this is way down in here. A dispensing organization shall not, and then you scroll all the way down here. They added seeds to the language. So they may not sell seeds, clones, or any other live patient plant material except to a registered qualifying medical cannabis patient or designated caregiver. And so on my first read, I thought that that meant they may not sell them at all. But on my second read, as I'm reading it right now on the podcast, it says except to a registered qualifying medical patient. Um, I th think this is interesting because some of these cultivators accidentally sell seeds. So I wonder what happens if – they accidentally do that, you know, because we've heard we've all heard those stories. So I found that interesting. And there there you can see, like you saw that as it happened, I read the the language again and my understanding of it changed. So as we go through the rest of this stuff, keep that in mind. Read it for yourself, I guess is what I'm saying. That's why I link these bills and I'm kind of teaching you how to read this so that you can read it for yourself. And and frankly, if you read it a different way than I read it. I'd love for you to leave a comment or uh, contact us at thecolememo.com slash contact because I'd love to hear how you interpret these uh, bills. So another part of this bill that was introduced would uh, basically make it so that curbside is allowed for everybody. Um, I think I also saw that a dispensing organization may sell – Cannabis infused products from any cultivation center, craft grower, infuser, or dispensary to persons 21 years of age or older, or to qualifying patients, designated caregivers, and provisional patients. So, this bill adds language that would allow for qualifying patients, provisional patients, and caregivers to buy medical cannabis, quote unquote, from all dispensaries. In other words, you get your cannabis, your regulated cannabis at a lower tax rate, uh, which is uh, a, a big complaint that we hear. I wouldn't say actually a big complaint. I would say the bigger complaint is the lack of choice and the high prices. I wouldn't say, you know, it seems like too many people focus on the fact that you can't purchase these products when really the problem is that we have a limited market uh, that causes arbitrarily high prices and, and lack of selection. So I actually paused the podcast for a moment because I got some questions from our listeners on Instagram uh, regarding some of the topics that I was that I was just discussing. Somebody asked, am I aware of any dispensaries that are actually even selling seeds? And, and no, I'm not. And in fact, I asked about this on May 8th of 2022, so almost two years ago. Um, I asked the Cannabis Regulation Oversight Office about the availability of seeds and dispensaries. And I'm just now realizing I got to be at least five minutes into this podcast and I've not lit my joint yet, which is a problem. So I asked Danielle, then Cannabis Regulation Oversight Officer, about the availability of seeds and dispensary. Pause for me lighting my joint. Okay. They responded and said, to the CROO's knowledge, there are no dispensaries selling seeds in Illinois. There would likely need to be changes to our seed-to-sale software, Biotrack, to allow for the movement of dynamic products, like seeds. There is no requirement for medical licensees, cultivation centers, and dispensaries to supply seeds. That's just something they said. I didn't necessarily ask about that. I kind of figured that there's no requirement. There's no requirement to sell anything, but you figure if they could, they would. Uh, but I've also argued that because developing genetics would require them to basically use part of their canopy, why would they? Also, it's the idea of 
if you teach a man to fish, why would he buy fish from you anymore? So I definitely see, you know, many reasons why seeds are not in dispensaries, but it sounds like one of the main reasons, or I guess I don't even mean to say main reasons, a technical reason as to why seeds are not sold in dispensaries. Cause I have had a dispensary or a licensee come on my show in the past and they, they have described how they did try many different ways to sell seeds since they weren't able to do it the, the state approved way they asked, well, you know, the head shops buy seeds and seeds are legal. They're hemp basically or legally. And, uh, can we, can we sell seeds? And they were told no by the state. They were told no by the state that was on my podcast. I can't remember which episode it was. Um, so I, I'm not going to plug it necessarily right now. Um, but let's skip back to Senate bill 3941. Let's see if there's anything, I, you know, I'm sure that there are things that I'm missing. For example, I don't know that I require uh, talked about the fact that this bill would make it so that physical examinations uh, may be required via remote means. So in other words, this would allow for uh, that telehealth certification of your medical cannabis card. One of the really weird things about this uh, 3941 that I want to show on the screen, there's like several, several instances and where they're adding text where they say beginning on January 1st, 2025, quote, prescription and non-prescription medicines and drugs include cannabis purchased by a qualified patient, designated caregiver, or provisional patient as defined in the Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis Program Act. I... I don't understand exactly what is being added here or why it's being added here. Um, this says beginning on January 1st, 2025, prescription and non-prescription medicines and drugs includes cannabis. So I, I'm not exactly sure what the like motivation behind this is. I, I will say that this language has appeared in the medical cannabis bill in the past. You can see it right here. So as, as I'm pointing out to you and displaying on my screen, you can see at additions underlined, but anything that's not underlined already exists in the bill from what I understand. And as you can see, you can see prescription and non-prescription drug uh, medicines and drugs includes medical cannabis purchased from a registered dispensing organization under the Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis Program Act. I don't understand why this this second part is being added, and I think I would have to ask Senator Laura Fine and under in order to understand uh, the intent uh, behind adding these things. So. There are a few different things I'm sure that I am looking over. I'm just doing a quick once over before I move on to the first bill that I actually noticed. Um, we'll go through that. So in this synopsis for the bill, the very last thing says makes changes in provisions concerning medical cannabis containers and I did a search of the law, and there I'm not finding anything. Now, you can see my control F here. Um, that's a command so that you can do a search of the law. So you can see container there, and I can go through here. I personally, unless I'm looking over something, I, I'm not seeing anything around the container language that has been modified. In fact, I even see it here. Cannabis container means this. There's nothing in this section that has seemingly been modified. I could be looking over something. Um, and that is why I will reiterate, I have Senate bill 3941 linked in the podcast description. Let's move on to Senate bill 3940, shall we? Which was just introduced by Senator Kimberly Lightford. Um, there's a few different things going on in this one. I'll be honest, this one was – both of these were really long. All of these cannabis laws are really long, which is a rant for another day. Um, I noticed that 
there was one thing that really stuck out to me in this in this law and i will see if just like the first law if i read it wrong on my first read um there was a part that said that let me copy the language that i have disclosure under the freedom of information act anything regarding that catches my eye um so let's scroll through there's two matches what you can see that I'm displaying here is this bill, if passed, seemingly would strike the language that says the name and address of a dispensing organization under this act shall be subject to disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act, the name and cannabis business establishment address of the person or entity holding each cannabis business establishment license shall be subject to disclosure. I don't understand why that's being... Um, removed from the law there are other things being removed from the law and i don't know just at a glance i could see why it would make sense the community i don't even know what this is about but it has something to do with licenses but anything that's getting uh removed that has to do with the freedom of information act definitely catches my eye um something that i found interesting that you know, might be of concern to cannabis operators. There's a $15,000 fine, and this would be cannabis CRTA certified or, um, you know, under the medical, which is both. Um, I'm high right now. You can see number six says, for each violation of this act or rules adopted under this act by a cannabis testing facility, an additional $15,000 fine can be issued. I don't know exactly what the context of these fines being issued are. I don't know why additional fines are being added. I just noticed that, again, you can see the text underlined on this bill. Uh, it's new language seemingly um another little bit of new language that i saw which i definitely found interesting was that craft multiple craft cultivators may share a single premises with a single cultivation center a craft grower may not share a premises with another craft grower outside of a cultivation center um, these rules would be adopted by 2025 and uh yeah you know i know that there's been proposals in the past for i think what's called a co-locating co-location this idea i've never heard this particular idea of uh you know a craft grower partnering with a cultivation center i've always heard the idea of like a bunch of craft growers getting together and kind of having all of their operations on the same property but this is basically it sounds like uh accomplish accomplishing a similar idea so uh so yeah that that'll be interesting to see you know if this bill becomes law that 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 could be a thing you know and maybe that could be a, a lifeline for some of these craft cultivators i don't know i noticed that there is a new section for rules concerning the application of pesticides uh, within one year after the effective date of this act, if it were to become law, it says the department, I'm guessing the Department of Agriculture, shall adopt rules prohibiting the application of pesticides to cannabis plants in the flowering stage in a craft grower facility. There's also a section for the same uh, concept, except in a cultivation facility. So in other words, they are adding new rules concerning the application of pesticides in the flowering stage, uh, which is a topic I've, I've covered on the podcast in the past. Another part I saw, I'll just do a quick search so you can see the language here. Um, and if folks are tuning in right now live on Instagram, this episode will release uh, probably later tonight. Um, so you can see the visuals if, if you'd like, uh, I'll also link the podcast or the, the bill notes in the podcast description. 
this section of the law says that the Department of Agriculture may not issue an agent identification card if the applicant is delinquent and filed any required tax returns or paying any amounts owed to the state. Just mentioning it because it's new. It's new in the law. I mean, I think I've seen this actually for other licensed um, professions. I think in the past we went through like an IDFPR disciplinary report, and I ten I recall that some people were getting their um, nursing licenses revoked because they didn't pay their state taxes. I think even some people were getting their dispensing uh, licenses, like they were just a bud tender, getting those revoked because they didn't pay taxes. So I don't know if this is just like matching parity with the Department of Ag. I have no idea. Again, I'll just reiterate that this is all new and I'm I'm just covering it so that hopefully uh you know you can do more research and, and find out about this stuff if it if it interests you. This is um another one that stood out to me. I'm gonna do a control F for regulation that may establish by rule. So both the Illinois Department of IDFPR, the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, and the Illinois Department of Agriculture. I've noticed the same language for both of them. I'm just displaying the one for IDFPR right now. May establish by rule market protections that protect against unfair business practices, including but not limited to price fixing, bid rigging, boycotts, agreements to not compete, exclusive wholesale arrangements for cannabis concentrate, cannabis flower, cannabis infused products, and any product that is licensed under these, this act to ensure that all license types have equal access to the market without unfair competition. So um, that's an interesting addition. I don't know what that means, uh, but again, it's it's in addition. I, I, this is a small one. I don't know exactly what this means or if this is just like a clerical addition, but it did stand out to me. The Department of Agriculture may suspend or revoke the license of or impose other penalties upon, and they added this part, cannabis testing facilities. That's what they added. This is The rest that I'm going to read is old. Cultivation centers, craft growers, infuser organizations, transportation organizations, and their principal officers, agents in charge, and agents for violations of this act and any rules adopted under this act. So they're adding, just to recap that, cannabis testing facilities under that section of the law, which would be if you're listening and want to look it up. Uh, I mean, I'm displaying it right now, but it's 410 ILCS 705-5-10. Uh, it would be dash B in this 3940 that we're looking at, which I'll again have linked in the podcast description. That is really what stood out to me in these bills. I am sure, as I think I've said multiple times throughout this episode, that there's something that I might be missing. These are just my first reads. I'm not a legal professional, so you know this is my layman understanding that you're hearing. And as you heard through this, this episode, I even read one, and I thought I read it a certain way, and then I read it a second time, and I was like, oh, that's actually what it's saying. So I encourage you to read this for yourself. That's another reason that I link this in the podcast description, because it's possible that I'm reading it wrong, right? Have you ever gotten a text message and you read it? I mean, you can't get tonality through a text, right? Completely unrelated example, but I'm using it for com comedic purposes. Um, folks, let me know what you think about these bills. Once again, linked in the podcast description dropped today um and i'll be interested to see if and where they go if they get signed into law um they're pretty hefty hefty they're big like if i printed this out it's probably let's see how many pages it says a hundred and almost 200 pages on 3940 and let's see on 3941 is almost 208 pages so 400 pages total between the two bills. I don't know. We'll see. Let us know what you think. We'll see you on the next episode of The Cole Memo. Take care.